Since 1953, only one European player has won Rookie of the Year award. The only player to do it is the Spanish legend Pau Gasol, who won the award in 2002. Seeing how great was Dirk Nowitzki, Tony Parker, and how great now are Porzingis and Antetokounmpo, it raises concerns. Have North American players been that much better than European players every year? Why European NBA players never win Rookie of the Year? Hey everyone, I'm Purple Punch, and today I want to take a look at the rookie classes from the last 20 years and see how good were European players and how close they were to winning the award. So let's start with year 1997. 1997 NBA draft produced some great NBA players like Tracy McGrady, Chauncey Billups, and most notably Tim Duncan, who is a FITA champion and not only won the Rookie of the Year award that year, but also made all NBA first team. Europeans were pretty bad. Only six were selected and the highest pick European player that year was Tariq Abdul Wahad with the 11th pick. He was selected by Sacramento Kings, but never proved himself. In his rookie year he averaged 6.4 points and 2 rebounds, and in only two seasons of his career he scored double digit points. He was out of the league by 2003. Sadly, he was the best European rookie. Four others didn't even play a game in the NBA, and only the 33rd pick Marko Milic from Slovenia played two seasons with Phoenix, averaging a bit more than 2 points per game. 1998 NBA draft was better. Vince Carter won the Rookie of the Year award and deservedly so. There was a certain big man from Germany who overwrote history books for European players, Dirk Nowitzki. Dirk Nowitzki has had a Hall of Fame career, he just wasn't as good in his rookie season. As for other rookies, nobody really jumped out. The first pick of the draft, Michael Olawakandi, was a half European. He was born in Nigeria and raised in UK. He had a moderately long NBA career and averaged 8.3 points and 6.8 rebounds, but for a first pick, he was kind of a bust. Others weren't a lot better. Rasho Nisteric is a subject for jokes in media till this day, and 7'3 Croatian Bruno Shundov has played for 30 teams in his career, but mostly in Europe. 1999 was a bad year for Europeans. That year Elton Brand and Steve Francis shared Rookie of the Year award, but I actually think Elton Brand was better with his fantastic 20 and 10 rookie season. Europeans were horrible. The highest picked European number 12 draft pick Aleksandr Radojevic played only 15 games in the NBA. And draft pick number 15 from France, Frederick Weiss didn't even make it to the NBA. Cal Bodler from Ireland scored 424 points over 3 years and 142 games in Atlanta. The one European who was kind of surprised was Andrei Kirilenko, as he developed in a solid starter for Utah Jazz. But his love for the game was questionable and he retired at only age of 34. Another solid pickup, especially since he was only the 40th pick, was Croatian Gordon Giracek, who played 10 seasons in NBA and averaged double digit points in 7 of them. The Millennium Draft of the NBA, or the NBA Draft of 2000, is regarded as one of the worst in NBA history. Mike Miller won the Rookie of the Year almost by default since there were no great players here. His closest competition was Kenyon Martin was a solid player but not really what you should expect from the first pick. The highest picked European at number 11, Frenchman Jerome Moiso, in his best season averaged 4 points and 3.5 rebounds. Hito Turkoglu was actually very solid and in his best season with Orlando even averaged 19.5 points. He was pretty much the best European in this draft and for a while was a solid NBA player. Pick number 24, Dalibor Bagaric, played only three seasons with Chicago Bulls and in 195 total games scored just 251 points. Jake Skalidis had one somewhat successful season, averaging 7.3 points and 5.6 rebounds. Slovenian Primoz Brezic shined for two seasons, averaging 13 and 12.4 points in Charlotte, but that was it. 2001 NBA Draft featured the last European who won Rookie of the Year. Pau Gasol. He really was the best that year, but there were some other solid Europeans in this draft. Like a longtime San Antonio Spurs leader Tony Parker, who will be in the Hall of Fame one day. And Turkish big man Mehmet Okur, who was one of the first big men who could shoot the threes. 
other Europeans really aren't worth the mention. 2002 was the year of Yao Ming, but Amari Stoudemire won the award. This draft featured absolutely no very successful European players whatsoever. The 24th pick Nenad Kerstich was somewhat solid and in his best season in OKC averaged 16.4 points per game. Spanish player Juan Carlos Navarro is a legend in Europe and EuroLeague, but he spent only one season in the NBA, averaging close to 11 points per game. 2003 NBA Draft is one of the best NBA drafts ever. That year basketball got itself a lot of superstars. LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Carmelo Anthony, Chris Bosh and a lot of other solid players. LeBron James won the Rookie of the Year award and I think there shouldn't be any arguments whatsoever about that. The European everyone probably remembers is Darko Milicic, who in his first season won a ring but never really had the love for the game or willingness to improve. Overall though, this was a pretty solid draft for Europeans. Chris Kamen, for a long time, was a solid center for Clippers. Michael Petrus was good enough as a scoring option from the bench, and Boris Diaw was instrumental for Spurs at times in their championship seasons. Others didn't have that much impact or longevity in the NBA. 2004 NBA draft was very poor when it came to Europeans. Emeka Okafor won the Rookie of the Year, but there wasn't a lot of competition from Europe. United Kingdom got two solid players for years in the NBA and national team. Ben Gordon and Lou Aldang for a long time were proven commodities in NBA. The highest drafted Latvian at that time, Andrus Biedrinch, was very good for the Warriors, but then he got the big contract from the Warriors and decided to not improve anything in his game and just retire for good. There were some other playable Europeans with certain roles in Sasha Bujacic and Beno Udrich, but that's it. 2005 wasn't much better for Europeans. Chris Paul and Darren Williams started their battle for the best PG spot, but Chris Paul was better and won the Rookie of the Year. Highest drafted European never showed up in the NBA, Linus Glazer was ok for a while in Denver and Toronto. There were some second round draft deals though. Polish hammer Marcin Gortat is still solid for Washington Wizards, and Ersan Ulyasova is also a no name if you need length and someone who can hit a 3. Nonetheless, nothing spectacular. At least one team in 2006 thought that another European could win a Rookie of the Year award. Toronto Raptors drafted Andrea Bargnani number 1 in 2006 NBA draft, but regretted it almost immediately. Bargnani was solid at scoring, but garbage at pretty much everything else, not to mention his awful defense. There was nothing for Europe in this draft, just nothing. Half Swiss, half South African, Thabo Cephalosha was a good player for OKC once. Just saying. 2007 was much better in terms of European talent. Number 9 pick Joe Kim Noah has been awful for the past couple of years, but not too long ago he won Defensive Player of the Year and was averaging pretty much a double double every night. Marco Bellinelli has been a very good soldier for multiple teams in the NBA and his three-point shooting ability is really necessary for a lot of teams. Rudy Fernandez, again like Navarro, made most of his name in Europe, but he wasn't that bad in Portland either. And most importantly, this draft gave us another Gasol brother. Mark Gasol over the years has become a proven commodity between NBA big men. None of them were better than Kevin Durant though, who won the award that year. 2008 was a bit of a drop off. Yes, the draft itself was ok, as it gave us Russell Westbrook, Derrick Rose, Kevin Love and other solid players, but from Europeans, the only ones that are still playing are Danilo Gallinari and Serge Bach. Alexis Ajinka was a late minute substitution for most of his career and didn't play this season at all. Nicholas Batum, for one of the best two-way players in Portland, has become one of the worst contracts in NBA. Nikola Pekovic was very good once, but injuries really derailed his career and he's retired now. And Omer Ashik, well, is Omer Ashik. A cat in the back who was a good defender once, but now is unplayable. The only thing you can say about the 2009 NBA draft if you're a European is Ricky Rubio. That's it. Nobody else made significant impact. Ricky Rubio is still playing and actually had a very good season with Utah Jazz. 
24th pick in the draft, Victor Claver, played like garbage for three seasons in Portland. Jonas Jarepko somehow still has a job in Utah Jazz, but doesn't play more than 15 minutes a game. And two other Frenchmen, Rodrigo Bebois and Nano Di Colo, had really short stints in the NBA and didn't make any significant impact. Tyreek Evans won the Rookie of the Year that year. 2010 NBA Draft was absolutely trash when it comes to European players. The best European player was Kevin Serafin, who in his best season averaged 9 points and 4 rebounds and he's out of the league now. Enough said. 2011 was a lot better. Now let's be honest, how could it be any worse? Kyrie Irving was the big name of the draft and won Rookie of the Year, but the first round and even the second round had a lot of good European players. Enes Kanter, although a very bad defender, is a capable scorer and rebounder and still plays a lot on Knicks team. Jonas Valanciunas is the starting center for Toronto Raptors. Jan Vesely is good in Europe but can be good in NBA and I don't know why. Nikola Vucevic has been very solid in Orlando for years now. Donatus Motiunas had his moments in Houston. Nikola Mirotic was one of the best players on Pelicans at the end of this season. Bojan Bogdanovic and Davis Bertans are very good three-point shooters. One of the best drafts as far as the volume of good European players, definitely. Now 2012 was all USA. Anthony Davis wasn't blossomed yet, so Damian Lillard took away the award. The only European draft in the first round was Evan Fournier, who has evolved into a really good player for the Orlando Magic. Jeffrey Taylor didn't do anything special in Charlotte and Tomasz Sotoronski is about the same type of rotation piece for the Wizards now, playing 20 minutes and averaging 7 points. No Euro present in this draft. It's 2013 and we have a new European superstar. Michael Carter Williams won the Rookie of the Year, but there were much better players in the draft. First of all, the highest drafted European was Alex Len, who was drafted number 5 by Phoenix Suns. He has the height and 8.5 points and 7.5 rebounds is solid, but the 5th pick should warrant something more. The real steal of the draft is pick number 15, Giannis Antetokounmpo by Milwaukee Bucks. He's a superstar in the NBA right now and should be for years to come. Dennis Schroeder is a good player for the Atlanta Hawks. Rudy Gobert is the reigning defensive player of the year and at pick 27 was an absolute steal. Alex Sabrinas is a rotational piece in OKC and Geoffrey Laverne is trying to earn some minutes in San Antonio. 2014 might have given us one European superstar. The Rookie of the Year award was won by Andrew Wiggins and the only other real choice was Jabari Parker. Highest drafted European Dario Sarge is a very important piece of Philadelphia 76ers now. And Clint Capella has proven to be a steal for Houston Rockets at number 25. Bogdan Bogdanovic is a solid scorer for the Kings. Now, Nikola Jokic looks to be like a possible superstar for the Denver Nuggets and hopefully he continues to improve. Thanasis Antetokounmpo really isn't as good as his younger brother Giannis, so I doubt he'll even be back in the NBA. Now, 2015 was a great year. With the number 4 pick in the 2015 NBA Draft, the New York Knicks select Kristaps Porzingis. Barring any injury or personal demons, Porzingis is the future superstar for the New York Knicks. Well, let's face it, he's a superstar now. He wasn't better than Carl Anthony Towns who won the Rookie of the Year award, but he might be better when all is said and done. Right after Porzingis, Orlando Magic drafted Mario Hazonia, but he has had problems adapting to the NBA and as of now isn't as good as advertised. Jetty Osman just started getting minutes with the Cavaliers, but for now remains just a deep bench player. And Willie Hernan Gomez was good for the Knicks, but has been an afterthought in Charlotte, unfortunately. 2016 NBA Draft once again didn't feature anyone special from Europe. We got someone special from Australia named Ben Simmons, who unfortunately had to miss his first year with an injury. Malcolm Brogdon used it and won Rookie of the Year. But from Europe, the highest pick was Dragan Bender, who was picked at number 4 by Phoenix Suns. His nickname is Croatian Sensation, but he has yet to prove it. In 25.2 minutes per game, he's averaging just 6.5 points and 4.4 rebounds. For a 7-1 guy, that's bad. 
Number 9 pick Jacob Poltel has scarred himself a bench roll with Toronto Raptors, and the month's bonus after being traded from OKC to Indiana has been a revelation. Juan Hernan Gomez, as well as Paul Zipser and Ivica Zubac, are still waiting for the opportunity to play more with their teams. Last year's NBA draft, as far as we can see it now, has given us a very good Finnish player in Lauri Markkanen. Maybe good but not yet good point guard in Frank Nilekina, which we probably will know for sure by the end of the next season. OG Ananobi was also pretty good this season, but a year is really too small of sample size to rate players, so we'll see how they do in a couple of years. So these are the European players of the last 20 drafts. To be honest, when I saw that only one European player ever has won the Rookie of the Year award, I thought that that's just not possible, that no Europeans were good enough to win the award. But taking a deeper look at the drafts, I see that it's a combination of two things. First, there are not a lot of great European players in the NBA. And the second, even if European players are great, they aren't great in their rookie year. Oh well, I just thought that this fact is interesting, hope you think the same. What do you think? Why players from Europe have such problems performing in their first year? When will we see another European player take home the NBA Rookie of the Year award? Leave a comment below, like this video and subscribe for future NBA content. I'm Purple Crunch and I'm out. Gucci flip flops, fuck you, hit your bitch and massage. This a big watch, diamonds dripping off of the clock. Pull the six out, winter time, dropping the top. Give it to they pussy.